Hello, and welcome to Testing ADF with the SMA100B. This short presentation will teach you how to configure ADF modulation on the SMA100B. If you're not already familiar with the concepts and technology behind ADF, be sure that you've watched the prerequisite video, Understanding ADF, before continuing with this presentation. To access the different avionics modulation types on the SMA100B, including ADF, First, select the modulation tile, then choose Avionics Standards from the list of available modulation types. There are two steps in configuring ADF. The first is entering the frequency and level, and this is done in the main SMA GUI. In particular, frequency should be specified before configuring ADF, since an error message will be generated if you try to enable ADF for the frequency outside of the standard range of 190 to 1750 kHz. The second step is configuring the modulation parameters, and this is done by choosing ADF under the available modulation standards. The only setting under the General tab is turning ADF on or off, so we'll concentrate on the COMID tab. Remember that an audible COMID is particularly important for positively identifying an NDB and detecting the possible presence of noise, interference, etc. In almost all cases, we want to enable the COMID state. Code is a two- or three-letter abbreviation of the simulated NDB. Note that if this field is left blank, a continuous tone will be sent. Frequency is the frequency of the AM-modulated audio tone. In other words, the pitch of the dits and dahs when we listen to the Morse ID. It is not the broadcast frequency of the NDB, which is set in the main SMA GUI. Be careful not to confuse these. Here, our audio frequency is 1020 kHz, but our RF frequency is 350 kHz. Period is how often the Morse ID repeats, and depth is the AM modulation depth of the audio signal. It's also possible to change the duration and spacing of the dits and dahs from the standard to a user-defined scheme. The only interesting measurement we can make on ADF signals is the COM ID. In this case, we're using the two-letter code LE. Most sectional charts actually show the pattern of dits and dahs for people whose Morse code may be a bit rusty. We can look at this pattern using a spectrum analyzer in zero span mode. The on off pattern representing the letters L and E can clearly be seen using zero span. Another way to verify the COM ID is using a simple AM radio. We just tune to the frequency of our NDB and hear the pattern of dits and dahs. Note that most AM radios don't go down to 190 kHz, so you may need to move your SMA transmit frequency into the AM broadcast band, that is 530 to 1700 kHz in the United States. You'll get better results if you choose a frequency that's not in use by a local broadcaster, attach a simple antenna, and turn up the output power. As you've seen, ADF is very easy to configure on the SMA100B. Just set the RF frequency and power, configure the COM ID parameters, and enable modulation in RF. The two easiest ways of examining ADF modulation are using a spectrum analyzer in zero span mode or a simple AM radio. This concludes our short presentation, Testing ADF with the SMA100B. Thanks for watching.